chain reaction or PCR is a method of amplifying a target DNA sequence in vitro using TAC polymerase, synthetic oligonucleotide primers, DNTPs, and a thermal cycling machine. This technology was developed by Carey Mullis in 1985, and with this invention, he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1993. The objectives of this study are to learn the principle of polymerase chain reaction, to describe how to prepare PCR master mix, and to explain how to operate a thermal cycler. The materials for this exercise include bacterial DNA or plasmid, TAC polymerase, DNTP mix, PCR buffer, ice bucket, PCR machine or thermal cycler, oligonucleotide primers, PCR tubes, sterile distilled water, sterile 1.5 ml microcentrifuge tubes, micropipettes, and sterile pipette tips. In preparing PCR reactions, it is highly important to keep the environment free of contaminants. Work in the PCR cabinet and always disinfect the bench or working area with 70% ethanol. Always use sterile microcentrifuge tubes and pipe tips. Wear fresh gloves and autoclave all solutions except for the heat labile enzymes. Store reagents in small alicos to prevent contamination of the stock solution. Always include a negative control which does not contain the DNA template to ensure that there is no contamination from the reagents. Always put PCR reagents and DNA samples on ice bucket to protect it from heat degradation. A standard PCR reaction includes a PCR buffer which provides a suitable chemical environment for the DNA polymerase. Magnesium chloride as the source of magnesium ions for the activity of the DNA polymerase. DNTP mix a source of nucleotides from which the DNA polymerase builds new DNA fragment. Forward and reverse primers which anneals to the target nucleotide sequence and determine the beginning and end of the region to be amplified. TAC polymerase which synthesize the complementary basis of the target gene. DNA template, which contains the region to be amplified. And sterile distilled water to dilute the PCR reaction to its final volume. Sterile distilled water is also used as the negative control for PCR reactions. This table shows the stock concentration of each PCR reagent and the allowed range of final concentration. The final concentration of every PCR reagent must be optimized depending on the DNA sample and primers to be used. This table also shows a sample PCR reaction with 20 microliters volume per reaction. The total number of PCR reactions will be 20 and an additional reaction volume will be included to cover possible inaccuracy of pipetting during the preparation. Prepare the PCR master mix in a sterile 1.5 ml microcentrifuge tube. Always use new pipette tips to prevent contamination of the reagents. First, Dispense the required volume of sterile distilled water, followed by the PCR buffer. Then add magnesium chloride, DNTPs, and finally the TAC polymerase. Do not include primers and DNA template in the master mix.
Prepare the DNA template and PCR primers separately in a PCR tube. Then add the PCR master mix and mix thoroughly by pipetting in and out or by vortexing. You can also use a mini centrifuge to spin down all the liquid components in the PCR tube. After preparing the PCR reaction, put the PCR tubes in the thermal cycler. Make sure to close the lid of the PCR tubes tightly. Loose caps may open during the PCR and it may lead to the evaporation of PCR reaction inside the thermal cycler. PCR thermal cycling profile commonly includes pre-denaturation, denaturation, annealing, extension, and final extension steps. 20 to 35 cycles of denaturation, annealing, and extension can produce a million copies of the target DNA sequence for two and a half hours or less depending on the cycle profile and efficiency of the thermal cycler. This table shows the allowed temperatures and duration for each step in the PCR cycle. The first step in PCR cycle is denaturation step where the sample DNA is denatured using temperature above 90 degrees Celsius. The heat will break the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs causing the double-stranded DNA to separate. This will be followed by the annealing step which has a lower temperature. On this step, the primers will anneal or attach to the target DNA sequence. The primer sequence has high specificity to the sequence of the target gene to be amplified. The third step is elongation, where the DNA polymerase forms new DNA strands by adding new nucleotide bases complementary to the target DNA sequence. These three steps will be repeated for several cycles, making millions of copies of the target DNA sequence. Thermal cycling conditions should also be optimized. Annealing temperature where primers attached to the target genes or DNA sequence has been observed to greatly influence the PCR result. You can do PCR in reaction volumes of 10 to 200 microliters in small reaction tubes or microplates. We recommend using thin-walled reaction tubes or plates designed for PCR. There are seven components in a typical PCR reaction. If you are doing multiple PCR reactions to minimize repetitive pipetting errors and cross-contamination, we recommend making a master mix that includes all of these components except the template DNA. For a single 50 microliter PCR reaction, you will need to add the following volumes of each component to a sterile 0.5 mL PCR tube on ice. Place the primers, DNTPs, template DNA, and polymerase on ice to prevent degradation. To assemble the PCR reaction, it is best to start with the component that is highest in volume, such as water, and then with the one lowest in volume, like the enzyme as it is easier and more accurate to add very small volumes to liquid in a tube than to an empty tube. Keep track of what reagents have been added to the PCR reaction. Reduce contamination by changing tips at each step and make sure all the fluid has been pipetted out of the tip. We recommend using tips with the cotton plug that are aerosol resistant. PCR buffer is often supplied with the PCR enzyme and comes as a 10x stock solution containing 100 millimolar Tris HCl and 500 millimolar KCl. The pH is between 8.3 and 9.0. Magnesium forms soluble complexes with DNTPs to produce the substrate for DNA polymerase. The most commonly used concentration of magnesium is 1.5 millimolar with 200 micromolar DNTPs. The usual concentration of DNTPs is 200 micromolar of each nucleotide. 
Always use a balanced solution of all four DNTPs to minimize the polymerase error rate. Use high quality DNTPs since a trace amount of contaminants can inhibit amplification. A good starting place for primer concentration is 100 to 200 picomolar. For details on primer selection, check out the separate video on primer design. Usually, 1 to 1.5 units of TAC DNA polymerase are used in a 50 microliter reaction. Higher concentrations may result in synthesis of nonspecific products. Tap or gently vortex and then briefly centrifuge the tube to bring the contents to the bottom. For multiple samples, you can make a large master mix that includes all of these components, scaled up for the number of reactions you are making, and then dispense 49 microliters of the master mix into each tube. Now you are ready to add the template DNA. The range is 0 0.01 to 1 nanogram for plasmid or phage DNA and 0 0.1 to 1 microgram for genomic DNA for a 50 microliter reaction. A higher amount of template DNA than this usually results in an increase in nonspecific products. Cap the tubes and centrifuge them briefly to bring the contents to the bottom. Your reactions are now ready for thermal cycling. I will be presenting actual PCR results from different optimization experiments. On this result, we can observe the effect of annealing temperature in PCR. Annealing temperature allows the primers to anneal or attach to the target DNA sequence. Too high annealing temperature may lessen the chances of primer annealing to the target gene. On the other hand, too low annealing temperature may lead to mispriming to non-target DNA sequences. Non-specific annealing of primers can result to several bands in the PCR product. To increase the specificity of primers, the highest annealing temperature where target bands are observed is commonly used. This result shows bands of primer dimers below 100 base pairs, indicated by the yellow arrow. Primer dimerization may result from excessive primer concentration. Excessive primer concentration may also lead to amplification of non-target sequences which will appear as bands with different fragment size from the expected PCR product indicated by the orange arrow. Optimum primer concentration must also be determined. Optimized PCR components and thermal cycling conditions will provide PCR applicants with the expected fragment size. Optimized conditions can then be used to produce consistent results in PCR analysis.